G'day and welcome back. Today I thought I'd have a look at this Grundig radiogram. This was given to me by a gentleman. He had originally asked me to look at the turntable for him, which I said I would. Uh, he never got back to me and then several months later he contacted me and said, you can have it, I've bought a new turntable. So here it is in the hallway, he delivered it, we carried it in and sat here since. So we can have a look inside. Here's the radio. Uh, now underneath here is space for some records, if you want to lie your records flat. Um, very nice looking radio. Look at this timber. It's beautiful in here. It just suits it. It's really nice. Uh, the dial glass is perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. Unfortunately it doesn't have FM so it was imported into Australia and we didn't have FM in the time. This would be mid-60s I would guess. Uh, it is stereo but of course that'll only be on the photo section. Magic Eye. And of course made in Germany by Grundig. So I'll have a look down the turntable end and there's nothing in there. The turntable is in a box out in my workshop. Uh, it appears there's two main speakers, one on each end of the front, and on each end there's an electrostatic speaker. A couple of areas where the veneer has been chipped off, but I should be able to fix that. Uh, stereo console Trento A slash WE. I haven't been able to find a circuit diagram for this radio or this chassis, so it's probably a standard chassis and they've put it in a radiogram. Uh, the first thing to do is try and work out how to get the chassis out and uh, I'll put it on the bench, we'll have a look at it. I have the set inside now and the first thing I noticed was this dial glass is actually plastic. Now, I said there was no FM, but I didn't say what it did have, and it's got medium wave, short wave 1, 2, and 3. It's got uh, phono and uh, tape recorder input, off button. There's another switch down the end here. It uh, operates this little window here, so you can turn mono on, but nothing happens to the stereo, so I'm not sure if that's right or not. It hasn't got FM, uh, so I don't really know if, what's going on there. Uh, FA is a ferrite antenna, so you can select the antenna on or off. Uh, there's a little wheel here for base I think. So you can got the window there to tell you where it's at. Uh, there's a tone switch down here uh, that toggles on and off. So once again a little indicator and I assume that one's treble. Uh, now the two controls here is volume and stereo balance. And up the end here, just a solid tuning knob that's not split those two. Here's the back of the set. As I could see before, the base is pretty rusty. I've put some tie wraps here just to hold this temporarily. When I got the set, that it was just floating around, hanging on its very fine wires. So as you can see, there's a bit of damage to the Litz wiring. Some there, some up there. So uh, that's going to have to be sorted out. And the two IF cans here, and one side's blank because the FM's been removed. So. A little cap on that one, yeah, same deal. Uh, I said the FM had been removed, of course it was never fitted, so it's not been removed. Uh, this is the power wire coming in, and you can see there that the wire is perished, so I'll have to do something with that before I put some power on it. Here's the selenium rectifier mounted on the end, I think that's the bottom of the filter cap. I'll turn this over, we'll have a look underneath. Here's the bottom, it's uh, reasonably clean. Here's the filter capacitor, it was mounted next to the rectifier there. A lot of the capacitors appear to be poly types. The resistors look good, I can't see any that have been stressed out, overheated. All these uh, adjustments here for the four frequency, they're all sealed, nobody's touched them. So with a bit of luck I won't need to look at those at all. It also has a separate on off switch and they're not built into the contacts which are always a problem. So if that's faulty I can repair that. All in all, it looks pretty good. I'll just spend a little bit more time just making sure there is nothing wrong with it. I'll repair the cord, the power cord, and maybe we'll put some power on and see what it does. While I was looking around, I noticed on the back of the speaker socket here, there's a connection there, and there's another one over here. Never been soldered there uh, for the electrostatic speakers. So that's from the factory. Anyway, I'll solder those up and we'll put some power on. I think I'm ready to go. I've had a good look around. I've connected speakers to it. I think I've got them in the right place and I've repaired the power lead. So I'm going to put some power on. I'll put it on dim bulb, of course. Now, as always, this is an isolated power supply. So I'll put some power on. I'll put it on medium wave. Lights on. Both lights are on. Okay, it works. I thought it would. I 
think there's only sound coming out of that side. Um, they're both humming. There's only noise coming out of that one. Hang on, we'll try something. Oh, I'm back. I've got some ping pong balls here. We'll see what they do. I don't know what they'll do. Okay, that one's obviously working. That one isn't. Uh, here's the two power output valves. I'll maybe swap them over and see if the problem goes with it. So I'll just switch it off. They're both hot. These output tubes are ECLL800. Um, they're about $100 each plus postage, so if one of those is gone, it's going to be expensive. I'll put power on again. Oh, it's not working at all now. I'll swap these two over again and make sure it comes back. All right, I've changed those two valves over again and I've put power on. It should be warm by now. That one's working again. And that one's not working. and the CEO of the Islamic College of Brisbane. Can we imagine James Bond driving an automatic electric vehicle, Alicadre? What are we thinking about this? Let's get those off there. I think the problem is here. I'll clean the base and the pins on this one. Mr. Clean gets rid of dirt and grime and grease in just a minute. Mr. Clean will clean your whole house and everything that's in it. Clean the bases for the three valves there. Try that. It's, it's something in here because I can make this crackle. Yeah. So it's something in there, I think. So I will go in there. I'll tighten all the little sockets up and I'll see if that works. I took this valve out. I retensioned all the sockets and it's still got the same problem. What matters is you. And what matters to you matters to us. ABC so it is in the socket here somewhere. So it may be a bad solder on the other side. I'll flip it over and... Uh, check all the soldiers. I flipped the radio over and I've got it running. I've got a knitting needle here. So I'll just put some volume on. And I'll just flex these uh, connections here. I think I've found it. This big blob of solder is touching the chassis. So I've just moved it up a bit, but I think that's what it was. It was just shorting out. That's completely fixed it. Well, that was the shortest repair ever. It's still there. So there's something wrong with the valve or the sockets or the pins. I'm not sure what. Anyway, I'll turn it over. Perhaps I'll just um, clean up and resolder all the connections on that socket and uh, see if that fixes it. I don't know what else to do. This is the socket that was giving me trouble. I reflowed all the solders around here and it made no difference. So I took all the solder off this one here. This is the one that had the big blob on it. Took it off, um, cleaned up the pins, put it all back together and I think it's okay now. I couldn't see anything wrong with it. I don't know why it was faulty. I checked the resistor here and the capacitor. They were spot on. So I'm pretty confident everything will be okay in here. But it appears to be working now. I'm going to flip it over and we'll have a look at it again. I've got it on full power. I tried it before and it was okay. So I'm going to leave it on full power. There it is. I've traded up the ping pong balls for um, foam peanuts. The ping pong balls made too much noise. Now that one's still cutting out. I'll turn it down. Um, is it still doing it? I feel a warmth in my heart and my soul that I've never knew. Hmm, Tony, it's cut out again. Uh, there's no noise from this valve anymore, so that probably wasn't the trouble. Huh. 
can't leave that song on. I'll tune something else in. Who are having interactions with the police? I could not say that. Uh, ah. I wouldn't go on record saying that. As much as there have been laws, there have been more laws to protect police officers. So these switch uh, contacts are dirty. Uh, if I put it on short wave or something, it's they're dirty. So maybe, yeah, that's come good. So maybe what I should do is get in there, clean all those contacts up and uh, get rid of that problem. Maybe that'll solve the single channel problem. What I did was take it out to the workshop. I blew out the switches here with some compressed air and then I lubricated them with some contact cleaner and just worked them for a little while. And I'll, I'll just see how that's worked. So I'll turn it up. I carry a reusable cutlery set. There's a knife in there. You know, I, mean, I remember when I was I went to TAFE after school to do chefing and we had to padlock all of our knives before we left any premises mm -hmm. we couldn't walk around. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, there's a follow-up <laughs> story. Well there done. Is. Rick Threlfall, Karen Crow, Thank wonderful to have you on the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank on you, Kate. Lunch Thank Club. You. So they're both working now. I'll just turn it up again. Um, so let's fix those up. Yeah, they're good now. So there's no crackling. Yeah, good. So maybe the problem all the time was uh, the switches here. Uh, there was issues with that valve up there, of course, but uh, that's fixed now. I need to do something with this selenium rectifier. I'm going to replace it with silicon diodes. Here's the two wires coming in off the secondary of the uh, transformer here. And this is the positive out, and these two here are the negative out. So that's rectified the AC into DC there. So if I put my meter there, it says we've got 259, 260 volts coming out. Here's where I took the reading at the output of the rectifier here. And it says here in the square box, 285. So we had 260, so we're about 25 short. I've got a couple of options here. These are bridge rectifiers, they're silicons. Uh, there's another one there, they're exactly the left. I could use individual diodes, but these are good. They just mount back onto one of the mounting screws there. Uh, they're pretty easy to put in and they're rated well and above what this ever needs. So I'm going to remove this and I'm just going to cut all the wires off and take it off and we'll see how that fits on there. So which one to use? I can put that there or like that or something. I might use the other one perhaps. I think I'll use that one. That'll just fit in there nicely. Uh, screw through the middle. That'll work all right. I've mounted the rectifier in there. I've got the two actives going in there from the secondary. Uh, there's the negative coming out and here's the positive. It's sticking straight out. Now what I've done is put a little resistor on here, or a big resistor actually. It's about 120 ohm and I've found that to be about the right size. We need to drop the voltage a bit because these don't have the same voltage drop as a selenium rectifier. So that will um, just about cover it normally. And I prefer to put some resistor in there to drop it down. Otherwise you end up overpowering it to see how much you need to drop it if that makes any sense uh, so there's positive DC coming out it's going through the resistor and I'll measure it here and I think I was looking for about 285 volts I've got the voltage selector on the radio set to 240 volts there I've got 240 volts on the dim bulb which I've done with the Variac and we're looking for 285 volts on the meter here and we've got to 280 so that's pretty good I'd be happy to run it about there so that guess at 100 and, what is 120 ohms is uh, pretty good, I think. Having said that, I'm going to change this uh, capacitor here. There's a fair bit of hum, plus it's an old capacitor. I would change it anyway. I'll put a couple of electrolytics. I'll take this one out, and I'll mount the electrolytics underneath, probably on a tab strip. We'll come back then and check this uh, voltage again, see what we've got. I've mounted the three capacitors here. I've decided to put them on the outside. It's quite neat there, and it gave a bit more room inside with all that missing. I don't like these terminals sitting out here, they're no different to what it was originally, but what I'll do is put some fish paper over it later on to uh, just to cover them up so you don't put your hand in, this is all open from the back. I'll just see what voltage you're running the B plus at, I checked the old capacitor and uh, it was way out, that would gain 30% at least. I've got the set on and there's absolutely no hum now, it was humming quite badly before, so that's gone, and the voltage is 280. And I've still got 240 going in, so yeah, 280 we've got going in. Uh, for a B+, I'm happy with that. It's a bit lower than what they say, but I'm happy with that. That's fine. 
I need to work out how many watts this resistor's got going through it so I can measure the voltage drop. So looking at the meter there, it's about 10 half volts. We'll call it 10 because that's easy to do the math. If it's dropping 10 volts and this is a 120 ohm resistor, you square the voltage and you divide by the resistance. So 10 volts squared is 100. You divide that by the 120 ohm resistance. That's about 0.85 watts. This is a 5 watt resistor, so that'll be fine. So what I'll do is I'll leave that in. That's working perfectly. I'm going to mount it onto the chassis here as a heat sink, and that'll be it for the uh, new power supply. I couldn't find a clip to put this resistor on, so I'm going to just make something. Just fold it up. It'll take them a minute. Alright, that'll do fine. So I'll go and fit that to the radio. I'll mount the resistor about there. There's a hole that's pre-drilled, uh, so I can put that in there. And I'll use the screw that uh, was holding the rectifier on earlier. The resistor's mounted. I've finalised all the wiring and put heat shrink on everything. Something that did concern me was that this resistor could fall down over time and strike this bracket here uh, and create a short. So I've, the insulation is on here as well, but I've put some on the bracket just in case it did happen. Another layer of protection. I don't think it'll move. I can't move it physically and the wire should hold it anyway, but I'll just take that extra step. I've also put some adhesive fish tape on these terminals here. I flipped the radio over. I've just spent a couple of hours and I've gone through and tested every resistor and capacitor that I could test without lifting it off the board and they have all been spot on. They're absolutely perfect. And what I did do is make sure that I tested all the ones uh, in the high voltage areas that have got uh, you know a lot of voltage on one side and not much on the other, or just ones that were in the high voltage area. I don't think I need to change any of this stuff. There is one electrolytic sitting in here. This is the cathode biased for the two output valves, so uh, I'll change that because it's an electrolytic, but that's all. Now what I can do, of course, is check the voltages of these uh, valves here, the, particularly these three valves here, the, uh, so that the, I guess that's a preamp and the two the two output valves, which have also got a triode preamp in them. Anyway, I'll, I can test that. I've got all the voltages on the sheet. I've got a schematic here, and it's got the voltages for the valves written up the top here. This isn't 100% for this radio. I, I think it's for a later version of the same chassis, but vaguely it represents it, so these voltages should be pretty close to what I need. So I'll just go through and just check them all. I tested all the valves. All the voltages are perfect. They're all very, very close to what they should be. But unfortunately, I had a computer glitch and I didn't actually manage to film it. I thought I was filming it, but I wasn't. I'll just skip that bit. I'm just going to change some capacitors on top of the output transformers. Then I'm going to turn it over and change another electrolytic underneath. I've replaced those two capacitors. Uh, that was a replacement. Someone's put in at a later stage. And this is the original capacitor and it tests for faulty so um, maybe there's an issue there all right i'm going to replace that other capacitor down here this other electrolytic uh, this capacitor used to be in there i've replaced it down the bottom there you can barely see it uh, this tested all right actually it's not looking so good but uh, it was okay it worked all right tested okay i'm happy with everything in here i don't think i need to change anything else everything else is tested perfectly so i'm going to leave it as it is i'll flip it over I just need to do a couple of things to the RF and that's about all. I want to do a couple of checks on the IF, just make sure it's right. I am confident everything is spot on. I can do a really quick test and see if it's going to be right. I've got my frequency meter set here. The IF on this radio is 460. I've also got an analog meter connected and that's on the plate of course. The generator is going straight into the mixer valve. So we bypass the antenna. All I'm going to do is move this up and down either way of the 460, see if I get a better result. That doesn't mean all the IFs are in a line, but it does mean that it probably hasn't moved in the last 60 odd years. I'll have to put the sound on, unfortunately, but I'll just put that at the 100 mark, if you can see it. There we go. And I'll move this up one, and it's less. I'll move it down one, and it's less. So what that shows is the total of all the IFs equal 460. Each individual one, one could be high, one could be low, and you'll still end up with 460. Uh, look, that's not very likely. I don't think I need to worry about it. 
you recall earlier in the video that this area here is damaged those wires could be shorting out uh, there's some there that may even be broken so I'm going to take this off and have a look and just see if it needs any work so I'll see if I can unwind this yeah, okay so I've unwound it to that bit of damage there I think that'll do there's a bit more over there gosh all right, that, that coating is just falling off. Uh, well, what am I going to do now? I'm in a pickle here. The wire has broken strands in it. The Where it's rubbed, it's probably shorting. So this is made of multi strands and of course they are just twisted together. So if I can count the strands, I, I can't get Litz wire. I probably can, but it'll take weeks to get it. Um, I do have this old wire here uh, that I got out of something, I can't remember what. Um, it's the same diameter as a single strand. I'm wondering, can you make your own? Why not? I'm going to go and rig up something and just run this back and forth, back and forth, and then twist it until I've got the right length. Solder the ends and hopefully that'll work. At this end I've put a screw in, I had to extend the table a little bit, it wasn't uh, long enough. And here's the other end and I've put a hook in there, uh, there's a reason for that. I'm ready to go, I've tied one end onto the screw down the bottom, uh, the other end's going around the hook and I've just got to go up and down here, I think about 16 times, I think I counted 32 in the old wire, 32 strands. Alright, that's 16. I'm just going to put some tape around here, I'm not sure why, but I will. So this end I'll take the block off, unscrew the hook and I'm just going to wrap it and we'll see what happens. This looks too thick actually. That looks pretty good. I Once again we'll put some tape there. All right, we'll wind it on the reel, see what happens. All right, I've wound it. I managed to get 20 turns on it. Uh, I dropped it and chased it around the floor a number of times, but I finally got there. So I'll just solder this up. We'll come back and see if it works. I've put power on and it should be warmed up by now. Uh, should be something at about 612 here. This is ABC Radio Brisbane broadcasting 612 on the AM band, streaming online on digital radio. I've got no idea, but trust me, it'll be fun. You'll laugh, and besides, it's a lead into the rugby league, so if you like rugby league, it'll keep you distracted. Hello, ABC Radio Brisbane is hitting the streets. Wherever you are, in and around Greater Brisbane, we're coming to a local meeting place. I don't think that's working as well as it used to. You used to be able to run it up and down and peak it, but this is sort of not making a lot of difference. Uh, I do have a thinner wire. I'll go and experiment a bit more and see if I can come up with something better. Now, just after I signed off that last bit of video, I went outside and thought, I wonder if I've got a coil in another radio I can get the wire off. Then I realised I've got an old Grundig set sitting there. It's got the same coils on it. This is a model or two after this model, I think. It's got push buttons on the front instead of the piano keys. But very similar layout. I'll put that on and that'll sort everything out. That's in good condition. I've put the coil on, the radio's going, I'll turn it up. Yes, and now that's affecting the reception. So I can, I've got the camera on the magic eye there, so I can tune that using the magic eye. About there. The station is at 612, so that's pretty close to 600. Just about there. Now, of course, I need to do that not with my fingers. It's a bit hard to see that the camera's not picking that up very well. But there it goes, it's closed. So that's tuned to perfection there. Let's turn that down. I am absolutely... <laughs> I'm still laughing. I can't believe I had a coil. I wasted all the time making some Litz wire. And I had a coil sitting there. Um, the, someone gave me that at um, one of the car boot sales. They said, oh, here, you might want this. So I put it up on the rack and didn't think about it again. 
Anyway, what an outcome. Very happy. <laughs> I'm just amazed. Okay. I'll turn this properly later with the meter and seal them up with this bit of uh, heat shrink over the uh, the join there, and it's done. Anyway, there's another test I've got to do, but I'll finish that off first, then I'll come back later and we'll do the next test. I have noticed that the dial is slightly out when it's on 600. At the other end, it's not so bad. So I'll just adjust that end and try and get it right. So I'll put some volume on. And I'll adjust it. Yeah, so it's... So it's out a little bit. Uh, the, the angle of the camera you're looking at, it's going to make it look worse than it is, but it's it's not that far out. So I'm just going to adjust that till it is in the center of 600. And that is spot on on the zero in the center of the 600. Uh, it looks out on your camera angle. From what I can gather, these three are the medium wave adjustments. Of course, the antenna coil is up on the no, loop stick. So this one should be the oscillator, I think. So I'll turn the volume up again. I'll just see if I can bring that 600 in. That's about it. That's all it needs. I'm going to run the dial down to 1600. And that's right in the center of 1600. Change the generator to 1600. I'll just see if I can peek that a bit. There we go. Nope. It's perfectly on 1600. I'm not going to touch it. Uh, it would be this adjustment here, this trimmer. I need to peek these antenna coils here. So I will wind the dial down to 600. And I'll set the generator on 600. There we go. Turn the volume up. Okay. So all I have to do now is move these two along to peak it. Just move this down a bit, I think. So it's somewhere around there. About there somewhere. I'll just use a little tool here to try and adjust this one. Looks about it there. I'll just fine tune this one again. That'll do. Alright, that'll be good enough. I've got to glue these down a bit and I'll heat shrink this over the top of the join there and that's done. Uh, there is one more uh, test to do. There's a blocker that blocks the IF frequency coming in through the antenna and that's set at 460. I think that's it there, and I think that's its adjustment. Now the generator's being fed into the antenna. If I feed 460 into the antenna, it should block it. So I'll just adjust my meter here, my generator, to 460. All right, I'll turn the volume up, and we should get absolutely no generator signal through. Can't hear it at all. So that is aligned correctly, or it's adjusted correctly, done. I've glued all the coils together, so that's finished. All that's left to do is just clean this chassis up. I'm not going to spend any time on it. I'll put a bit of rust remover on it, just wipe it off, put a bit of something over it to protect it, and that's it. I'm not worried about trying to restore that. I've brought the radio out to the workshop. I've got the footy on, I'm all set. I'm going to take this um, back plate off here. It's a bit rusty. Actually, these dials, um, they do work. I was worried that something was broken there, but uh, no, they're all there, so. They're out of the way. All right, there's more brackets to take off. I, I thought I was just going to be able to lift that out, but I can't. Okay, now it's off. Now that's not too bad. Uh, I, I'll clean it up. I'll probably give it a coat of paint, actually. That'll look good behind the, the dial. Well, there it is there. It doesn't look too bad. Up the front here is all right. The back of it's got a lot of rust around it. So I can just wipe this off, I reckon. That'll be fine. There's the rusty part there. It's not, it's not too bad. I've got some products I'm going to try on it. 
What I have here is Metal Rescue. It's supposed to not affect the paint, but I'm going to try it on a spot first. This is kind of the equivalent of Evapo Rust. Uh, and before you say, why don't you buy Evapo Rust? It's $100 for 4 litres or a US gallon. So that's why I've got this one. Uh, now the only areas that have got paint on them are on the top here. So I'll just put a bit here. That'll be hidden by the bracket here. So I'll put some of that on there, leave it for 5 minutes, and then come back and see if it's affecting the paint or not. All right, that's been, oh, 10 minutes at least. I'll see what happens. Well, it hasn't affected the paint. And it is removing the rust, so it looks like it'll be okay. I'm going to treat this area up here with the rust remover. Uh, there's a bit down here on this angle down the bottom, so I'll treat all that. The rest of it I think I can just clean up and uh, it'll be fine. So. I'll get stuck into that and we'll come back and have a look when I've finished. Well this has come up pretty good actually, better than what I actually intended it to, so I'm quite happy with the outcome. Uh, here's where the rust was and I'm really happy with the way that's come up, it's perfect, it's great. I cleaned and polished the knobs here, unfortunately the gold hasn't come up quite as good as it normally does, I didn't polish it too hard, I don't want to go through. And I painted that backing plate for the dial, so I've got to let that dry. Once that's dry, I can reassemble all this and it's ready to go back in the cabinet. The dial backplate is dried, I've refitted it and I just need to fit on the plastic uh, dial piece here. There's a couple of brackets to go on the top and I'll put the knobs back on. It's all back together, the knobs are on. It looks really nice on the front. Um, the piano keys cleaned up nicely. The chassis looks better than I ever expected it to. Now, I kept saying this had a paint finish on it and I don't think it has, in fact it hasn't. This is some, it's almost raw metal, I think, and it had some very thin silver plate or silver paint on it, and it's uniformly fallen off everywhere, so there's none left. I'm not sure what the setup was. There are specks of silver paint still on the uh, unit around valve bases and things like that, so I don't know. Anyway, that's what it is, uh, so I'll just leave it as it is. Uh, the repainted reflector behind the glass, it looks really good. I'm glad I painted that. I was almost just going to leave it. At this point I'm going to wrap the video up for this week and next week I'll look at the cabinet and the turntable and then we can put it all together and I reckon it's going to sound terrific. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you can join me next week for my next radio adventure.